Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 109 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. Right now we're in the middle of our final frame raising period where we've got a large group of volunteers constructing and installing the last of the frames for the bow of the boat. This is the last frame to be shipped on. We've got some extreme bevels on this. All the way over. Woo! So the frame raising is going really well, the guys are all off for the weekend and I'm using this time to start working out the shape of the fashion piece. Now the fashion piece is not quite a frame, although it's very similar. It's the piece of wood that holds the transom onto the planking. The stern post, the transom and the fashion piece are all at an angle when viewed from the side of the boat. So you can see the stern post here coming up at an angle and the fashion piece will follow that same angle. So although it's built like a normal frame, uh, it has to be lofted separately, which can be quite complicated because you've got to make an expansion of the transom completely separate to the frames. Working out the bevels for the fashion piece and the transom is particularly challenging. Once I've drawn the shape of the forward face of the transom on the lofting floor, then I will make a template from it in the normal way. And then we'll find the timber and cut it out with the bevels on the ship saw. And that'll happen slightly differently to the rest of the frames because uh, the template for the fashion piece uh, is based off the after side of that whole piece, whereas the template for most of the frames represents the center of the frame.
I think it might be Port Townsend. Sure. Ooh. Yeah. All right, so we are on our way to Port Townsend, which is just down the road. Uh, we've actually run out of live oak. Now we've cut out all the futtocks for all of the frames, except for the fashion piece, which is the frame which uh, joins the transom to the planks and it's uh, on an angle. So it's a bit different from the rest of the frames, but I decided to build it out of live oak and try and get it done in the framing party. We've actually got quite a lot of wood left, it looks like, in the yard, but unfortunately all of it is full of sapwood and big knots and shakes and stuff, so unfortunately it's pretty much all unusable. But I'm really pleased because actually uh, you know, I estimated the amount of timber that we needed fairly well. I mean, I, I bought more than I thought I needed, and I'm glad I did because you know, we literally need one or two futtocks uh, from this place in Port Townsend. Um, luckily, there is a yard in Port Townsend that has some live oak. It came from the same place in Georgia, so it's the same stuff. Uh, they used it for a project a while ago, and they have a little bit left over spare which uh, we can go and hopefully just chop a couple of futtocks out of and check in the truck and bring back. So back in the yard, uh, we've got a few pieces from uh, Port Townsend. Uh, it turns out that the timber they had there actually wasn't uh, much better than what we got here. But they did have a few slightly wider boards, so we got what we needed. And now I'm just marking it out and we've got to cut it up. So because the timbers that we got from Port Townsend are so large, uh, they were for framing a much larger boat. We're going to have to resaw them before we can fit them on our planing table. So we're going to use the ship saw. We just set up a little fence. So in celebration of how well we're doing the frame raising, uh, we thought a day out was in order. So very kindly been all allowed to sail aboard Martha, the schooner, um, and we're currently racing around Port Townsend. And we're going to win. And we're not going to win. Oh. <laughs>
So the fashion pieces have been made, here they are on the floor. Pretty pleased because building the fashion pieces wasn't actually part of the plan for the frame raising, uh, so we got far ahead enough that we were able to do that. We didn't have time to install them, but that's something that I'll be doing in the next few weeks. So a little while ago I ordered quite a lot of timber from a sawmill in Suriname. That timber arrived in Seattle yesterday and I've just heard that the container is going to be coming into Port Townsend today. So we're going to drive down there and unload it and put a lot of it into a kiln. The timber is a mixture of Wana and Angelique. It's mostly Wana which will be used for the majority of the hull planking as well as various carpentry and cabinetry inside the boat and the Angelique will be for the shear strake, the broads, beam shelves and stringers. I chose this timber because I really want the hull to be nice and strong and I wasn't that comfortable uh, using the softwoods that are available locally. The Wana is also a similar weight and strength as teak which is what the original planks are and whereas teak is extremely expensive very difficult to get hold of in the sizes that I need. The Wana on the other hand is relatively cheap it comes in really strong wide clear grained boards and the mill that I'm getting it from is a locally owned Surinamese mill and it's certified by both the FSC and the Rainforest Alliance meaning that it should have been milled sustainably and responsibly which is really important for the future of our timber supplies and our planet as a whole. Now this container full of timber cost me around $21,000 plus the shipping and the tax and everything else brings it up to well over 25 grand but it's not just planking stock that's in there there's a lot of other timber which will be used for other stuff and to put it in perspective if I had wanted to use teak the planking stock alone would have cost upwards of $70,000 and the boards would uh, probably not be as wide or as long. Nevertheless, it has put a serious hole in my bank account balance, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing the timber and uh, hoping that it's gonna be worth it. So we're just unloading the timber from the container now and we're doing that at Edensor which is just over the road from the kiln that we're putting some of this in and Edensor have extremely graciously and generously helped me to unload this uh, even though it's not timber that I bought through them. So massive thanks to them, uh, I'm going to be getting a lot more timber from them uh, for Tally Ho 
and I'm really excited because all this planking stock looks, looks really good and as you can see it's really really long which is what we want. So this is the timber that's in the kiln and the uh, container that it came in was theoretically the same size as this container but minus the insulation and so unfortunately the ends of the planks stick out they don't fit into the container which left us I thought with two options neither of which are very good chopping the ends off all of the boards which would be a horrible thing to do or uh, just not kiln drying them until Finn came up with the good idea of building a little box around the end of the container so I think we're going to try and load them in and uh, build a little insulated end to extend this kiln. Turns out this stuff is really heavy. It's pretty freshly cut, so we checked the moisture. It's about 53% moisture content, so it's sopping wet, which means it's really, really heavy. So it's quite a lot of work to get it into the container. So we're gonna try and bring down the moisture content in this kiln really slowly, so it's gonna take quite a while. We're not actually gonna be using this timber for a while. So we managed to fully load the container and we got 95% of the planking stock in there which is great, I didn't think we'd get that much in. The kiln is as full as it has ever been and as full as it can be and we've got almost all the planking stock in there so that's really good. It's a really tough job getting all this stuff in there in the sun so I think everyone's pretty wiped out and we're going to go and have a beer.
So I'm standing in front of frame 5A at the moment and that's the last frame that's being installed into Tally Ho. It's right at the bottom of our checklist. We actually finished assembling the frames a few days ago and the last couple of days we've been down in Port Townsend unloading all that planking stock. But Pat and Rowan and Finn have been finishing this off. Oh yeah. How does it feel to be nearly finished? A little bit like being about to get out of jail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of about to be released. <laughs> Looking forward to it, but also dreading it. Shut up, Shut up Janice! Janice. This is a, a callus from clamping the planks to the frames. The frame raising has been brutal. It's taken quite a lot of me. <laughs> no, it's been awesome. I learned so much. I'm gonna be visiting my family in Scotland and then I'll be back here in a bit. Thanks a lot for your help, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. It's been uh, totally incredible to uh, learn everything I've learned over the last month and uh, I'm very thankful for everyone involved. Yeah, it's been a lot of work, I guess. It's been more fun than not fun, but you know, you need a little bit of mix of both so you can appreciate the good times. I feel, I think, in a little bit better shape than when I left, even though my hands are a little bit sore every day when I wake up, I think they're, they're gonna be stronger when they get back to work. Yeah. And, and I think the, the notion of having a boat uh, is something that hasn't appealed to me before, but building it was something that I was really interested in, and I've enjoyed that part of it. And obviously I wanna continue building stuff, but I do kind of now have the itch to learn to sail, so that might be something I pick up in the future. Well, I live in San Francisco, but there's already one there, so I'm gonna put one in my home state of Montana. Okay. Right here in the Bitterroot Valley. Well, thanks a lot for coming back again, Finn, and, and helping again. It's, you've been a huge help, as, as always. Thanks. <laughs> No, thanks for having me back. Uh, I appreciate being allowed to come back for a second time. It's been great. When I got home last time, I bought a boat. So I'm gonna go back and hopefully go back to work <laughs> and get on preparing my boat and get that ready for some ventures on the sea. I've made a, a YouTube channel, uh, not finished yet. I'll start making some videos and see how it goes. See what happens. Been great fun. Definitely gonna be coming back if you have me. <laughs> It was, a, it was a hell of a mission getting it all done, um, but yeah, it was ultimately one of the, exactly what I was after. So yeah, I've, I also have been pestering Leo to give me the plans so I can make a version of Tally Ho to the scale of the plans using the same wood that's in the real one. Estimating it's going to take me roughly about two years to do. <laughs> <laughs> this Brighton's pretty crowded. I'm going to go where I grew up. So have you got, you got enough timber there, do you think, for your model? <laughs> well, learning from you, I had to overdo it a bit, you know, and get a little bit too much, just in case. <laughs> well, that's very wise. <laughs> have you left any for me? Ah, uh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for everything. Thanks, dude. Uh, Take it easy. Well, we've reached the end of our frame raising. Everybody's left and Tally Ho has been completely reframed. So I couldn't be happier with how it's gone really. Everyone was really great. Everyone worked really hard and got on really well. I feel really lucky to have had such great volunteers here. And also, of course, to have such great supporters and such a great audience. All the positive comments and support for the project uh, really make a huge difference and give me a lot of faith for 
humanity. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to getting onto the next stages of the project. I'm going to be working on my own for a little bit now after all the activity of the last few weeks. I thought it'd be nice to dial it back a bit, get some more time actually using tools rather than managing people. So a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise supported the Tally Ho project. It makes a huge difference and it means I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos. So I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.